Welcome to LegacyCast, your source for hearing from top influencers, industry experts, and successful business owners who are telling their unique story about life, values, goals, business strategies, and the various causes they are so passionate about. Future generations will come to be impacted by what is happening today, whether positive or negative, and our mission is to focus on what is going to affect change for the better. Hosted each weekday by James Snow, a former U.S. Army combat medic, now founder and principal advisor of James Advisors Group, a full-service financial planning firm in North Texas. This is Legacy Cast. Welcome, Legacy Cast listeners. This is your host, James Snow, coming to you from North Texas. And I have with me today Amanda Abeya. And uh, Amanda will be able to tell you uh, about what she does. But uh, so, uh, welcome to the program, Amanda. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. By the way, I dig Texas. I tell people that all the time. I'm like, you know what? Texas has got something a little special to it. I don't know how to explain it, but the people in Texas are pretty rad. I see why a ton of people are moving there now. <laughs> You know, we, we definitely have, you know, lower, you know, we don't have the, the state income tax, which is a pretty nice thing. So, you know, we, we get to benefit from that. But, you know, also the friendly, friendly personalities, I think, kind of helps. Yeah, I think people in Texas are super, super friendly. Yeah, and of course, and I live in Florida, so we have no state income tax either. People are like, why don't you move to New York? And I'm like, why would I deal with snow in Texas? Like, that just doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Yeah, the, the fiscal decision is yeah, it's a no-brainer to me. But but I, I think I live here, so yeah. So when you're when you're thinking about legacy, uh, we'll kind of get on on that kind of thinking for a moment here. Uh, when you think about the the word legacy, what does that mean to you? I think legacy means okay, what's going to stay after you're gone? Um, you know, because really, ultimately, when that time comes. It's not the money you're in the bank. It's not the stuff you have. It's really like, have I helped enough people? Is there going to be something that I know I made the world a little bit better while I was here? Did I play full out in terms of making the world a better place? That's what I think of when I hear legacy. Okay. And do you feel it's important that everyone actively consider uh, what they're doing, say, on a day-to-day basis that's going to play into and impact their legacy? I think so. I mean, I think part of the reason why there's so much discontent in general in the world right now is people Mm -hmm. aren't busy enough with a purpose. Like that's, that's really what it's about. You know, if you've got time to be like Twitter ninja and like a keyboard ninja on social media, you need to reevaluate your priorities and what you're doing (laughs) in a day, you know? So I had this discussion with a friend I recently interviewed on a podcast and She had this theory and I agree with her. She goes, there's so much dissatisfaction. There's so much depression. There's so anxiety, so much anxiety. People don't feel like they have a purpose. Mm -hmm. Very true. Very true. Now you have a a program that, that uh, your uh, persuade to profit program uh, Mm -hmm. that you were mentioning to me. Now what, what, what is that? So Persuade to Profit is my six-week training for bloggers and business owners and influencers. So it walks them through the initial stages of conception of a business idea. So we start with market research, walk through offering, create a marketing plan, and then we create their first sales funnel. And it's all based on knowing their market better than their market knows themselves. So that's my best-selling program. We've helped people increase revenue by 10 times. Um, we've helped people go from making a thousand dollars a month to six figures in a year. We've had clients close $13,000 contracts in a matter of weeks. We had a client who was recently in time, others who've been on radio shows within a week. Um, so it's, we're very proud of it and it's very effective and it's helped a lot, a lot of people, uh, really make more money, which I feel like is part of my legacy, which is to teach people, you can make whatever kind of money you want. You just got to solve a problem in the marketplace. True, very true. That sounds like an amazing, amazing program that you have going. Yeah, I mean, it's so much fun, and the students in the group that is, that is in there, they're so close-knit because 
you know, going back to, you know, people not feeling like they have a purpose. One of the things I hear all the time from our clients who are in that program is we don't know who to talk to about this. We have this massive goal. You know, we know we need to make money in order to help people because it's going to take money to reach them, you know, and, and we want to make sure that we're taken care of too. But we have this like massive vision behind it to like change the world. And like the people around us just don't get it like the people in their regular lives. So what's really cool about the program, it's not just the content that gets people results, but the community that has been built in terms of people really supporting each other on that journey has been incredible to witness and facilitate. Wow. You know, sounds, sounds like a great opportunity. Uh, so with, with that being said, uh, how would your views on legacy uh, affect what you do in your business? Oh, okay. So that's actually a really great question because I was thinking last year, you know, it's really interesting. I was just on another podcast interview and I said something along the lines of, listen, once your bills are paid, that's not what gets you out of bed, right? It's something bigger that gets you out of bed to work once your bills are paid. There's only so much money you can stack in the bank before you get bored, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's got to be something else, another driver, so I really spent a lot of time in 2018 figuring out what that was for me because I, I did what I wanted. I had a six-figure business by 30. That's what I wanted to do. So great, I'm here. I've arrived and everything's running smoothly and now I'm bored because I feel like I've lost my purpose. I hit a goal. So like what's, what's next? And it wasn't from a place of I need more money, I need more money. It was more from a place of what's my potential and how many more people can I help? So what we ended up doing as a result of that is we, we, we started figuring out ways to scale. You know, I hired a full-time assistant, which I didn't have before. I've hired an associate coach so we can help all these people who are coming to us and really help facilitate that process for them, which was not available before when it was just me and a couple of contractors. So as a CEO and entrepreneur, uh, would there be maybe a couple things that keep you up at night still about that? I mean, I think when it comes to money, like everybody's always worried about it. And it's not, it's a different kind of worry. I think once you're making decent money, the worry becomes, okay, where can I best use the money? And then you use it and then you got to go make some sales again, <laughs> you know? So I think, to, but that's just a part of the process. I think that as a society, we're just kind of, taught to be scared of money like there's not enough of it um and in entrepreneurship you have to sort of learn how to use it so one of the things that i've told my clients recently is and i've had this conversation with several colleagues is when it comes to money and entrepreneurship the thinking of the world in general is so broken around money that even if you're doing the right things even if you're investing even if you're using money wisely even if you're making money you are still susceptible to a lot of the broken thinking of the world because it's so prevalent. It's coming at you all the time. You know, it's right. coming at you with friends, family, the news, like, Oh my God, if I have to sit through one more dinner where people are complaining about their jobs, like I literally just can't stand it anymore. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So we have to be so strict, right? I don't know if strict is the right word, but we have to be so careful about what it is that we consume and we have to reinforce it. Right. Otherwise, we do start getting worried. We do start freaking out again and we do start sabotaging and, and that those behaviors start coming back um, because we have to mitigate them because we have to do our best to make sure that we're not being affected by the thinking of the world. And the reality of the situation is that for most people, they're thinking around money and entrepreneurship is totally broken. <clears throat> So do you believe it's important that uh, people create um, structured things such as business plans and financial plans and other key strategies? Oh, that's so funny. I literally just got asked over the weekend if I believe in five-year plans, and I said no. Not a single colleague of mine has ever written a formal business plan. I have never written a formal business plan. <laughs> do I track numbers? Yes. Do we have reports? Yes. But why am I going to make a five-year plan? I could change my mind six months from now. Why am I going to limit myself and the universe to whatever my mind 
can think because mm -hmm. whatever the universe can think is probably way bigger than what my brain can come up with. So why don't I just allow for an unfolding to happen? Okay. <clears throat> well, what do you think uh, the most common reason is for entrepreneurs that they end up failing or giving up? I think people give up way too easily. I think that's one of it. Um, they just don't want to do it. Right. Um, I think there's also a lack of focus on income generating activities. Everybody wants to post stuff on Instagram. Not everyone wants to learn how to do sales because that is uncomfortable mm -hmm. <laughs> and people don't sure. like being uncomfortable. <laughs> right. So I think there's yep. that. I think another thing is they don't make decisions fast enough. You know, they're just like, let me think, let me think, let me plan, let me plan, let me plan. And then nothing happens. So I think that's a part mm -hmm. of it. Um, I think they're terrified of money, using money, investing money. They're terrified. Um, and I think ultimately it comes down to they don't trust themselves to make good decisions. That's a really major one that I see a lot. And they don't trust themselves to make good decisions in their business. They don't trust themselves to be disciplined. They don't trust themselves to invest. They don't trust themselves to find the right mentor. Um, and I think to, to go back to your point, you know, I think part of the reason people fail is because when they get into entrepreneurship, they don't realize that entrepreneurship is basically a massive personal development training and that you are going to have to face your demons and you're going to have to do things you don't want to do. Right. And you're going to have to, to handle things about yourself that perhaps you didn't know were there, you know, like you can't have an ego going into this. Right. Uh, because That's it will true. destroy you. And with entrepreneurship, you are forced to deal with your garbage and everybody has garbage. And I think a lot of people aren't willing to do it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so from your experience, uh, are there some roadblocks that you had warn um, a new, you know, budding entrepreneur to look out for and maybe uh, point out some resources they could tap into as well? Yeah, I think one of the things that I've been hearing a lot um, from my new associate coach who I hired and one of my advisors is there's this idea going on that everyone's a freaking coach. Everyone's a business coach. And there are people who have spent tens of thousands of dollars and have gotten nothing out of it. So I think one of the roadblocks would be really vet the person that you're going to work with. Like, what's their track record? What kind of results do they get people? Um, you know, what is it that you specifically need? Do you need like a training on sales? Do you need a training on systems? Do you need a training on branding? And if anybody promises you, oh, you can do this in like no time, like you can make all this money in three months. If anybody is promising you anything, run. So my team and I will often get asked, can you guarantee results? And I say, no, because that would be totally unethical of us for us to do that. We can't guarantee anything. There are so many variables, like how much work you put into this that we have no control over, right? What we can do is tell you what other clients have been able to do and the common denominators and traits that they have so you can replicate it and increase your chances of getting results. Yep. So what, what kind of resources would you, would you recommend someone to look out for and take advantage of? Um, Anything that teaches you about sales, because if your top line isn't coming in, there's really not a whole lot you can do. So if that revenue is not coming in, if those sales aren't coming in, so I know a lot of people are going to get triggered by it, but you need to go learn how to sell, right? If you need to make money, that is literally the only thing that is going to make money. So I think that is an excellent resource. Um, and also, I think some resources on mindset would be amazing. There's a great book called The Abundance Code. I cannot remember the author at this moment, but it really systematically debunks a lot of the, like the six most common myths we have about money as a society. So making money is hard. Rich people are evil. It just like systematically destroys them with logic. Um, and I think that's really good as well, because when it comes to our mindsets around money, it's like we have to go through a detox. Yeah, good stuff. So how would your personal values and belief systems play a role in your business? And how would you advise others uh, to incorporate theirs into their own business? Yeah, so my personal value and belief system, I believe in freedom above anything else. Right. 
And ultimately, all money does, and we teach people how to make money with their own businesses. The only thing money does is give you options, choices. And when you have options and choices, you have freedom. So that would be one way because my ultimate value is freedom. Right. And in my personal life, it looks like I don't want anybody telling me what to do, where to be, when, like I want to make these decisions. And when a lot of the clients who come to us, they want the same thing, right? So I'm like, great, you can have that, but you're going to need money because all these choices that you want cost money. So how are we going to make it? So is there something uh, that earlier in your life you would have done differently uh, now that you look back? Um, I mean, I'm not that old, so <laughs> I don't have that much to look back on. <laughs> <Very true. laughs> um, honestly, at this point, like the only thing I think I would have done differently is I would have started t- taking more risks sooner. But I don't want to harp too much on that for myself because I also realize and I know why I didn't. And it was okay. Like I was on my own timeline and I wanted to make sure that the risks I was taking were calculated. Um, But I I would have started taking risks sooner. I would have invested more in mentorship sooner. I would have um, really put myself out there more sooner. I would have put money behind marketing sooner. Um, You know, but you live and you learn and and now we know. And I take all those lessons and then that's how we were able to double, double revenue and profits in a year because I did the exact opposite of what I had done for the previous seven years. <laughs> yep. Very good. Very good. So when you're building your business, uh, what hurdles did you have to overcome uh, when doing that? I think it's the same hurdle everybody has, which is where's this money going to come from? <laughs> right. And you figure it out, you know, you learn how to make money, you learn how to hustle, you learn how to be resilient. I think that's the only obstacle people have is time and money. Right. And those are the two things you can go figure out. Yep. So you're, you're saying you, you kind of stumbled upon those, those answers. Uh, maybe talk me through a little bit of that. Yeah. So with money, it's like, okay, well, exchange value in the marketplace and there's your money. That's it. You don't need anything more than that. Learn how to sell something and you've got your money and you've got your capital. Um, I think because I come from the traditional personal finance space, there's also this idea that debt is evil. And I've learned, I don't have any debt, but I've learned that, no, actually it's not. If you learn how to leverage it as the tool that it's meant to be, it can actually really get you a lot further. (laughs) Um, You know, so that's an example Um, you know, so that would be another example of capital and money, um, or even most recently, and this is more in a, in a personal finance side of things, but the, the, the concept is still there, which is I took money out of index funds because the stock market has been insane, right? Mm -hmm. Just money I had sitting there. It wasn't retirement. It wasn't anything. It was just sitting there. It was, I was just putting money away. Right. Any extra money I had, I would put it there. Well, I mean, the stock market's been a little nuts lately. So what did I do? I took that money and I moved it over to another investment. So basically what that means is, oh, I don't have $5,000 for this investment. Yes, you do. It's sitting in index funds and the stock market is being stupid right now. So just move it from one investment to another. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good stuff. So when you're starting your business, uh, maybe talk me through how you started that, uh, building it out and and so forth. So it kind of started by accident. It was 2010. I couldn't find a job and I Googled how to make money writing. That was literally how it started. At the time, I had no idea I would get into personal finance. I had no idea influencer work would become a thing. Uh, I didn't know what coaching and consulting was back then. I really was just putting one foot in front of the other, trying to find solutions for myself. So was there a a particular moment that kind of uh, was an aha moment that compelled you to go in this direction? There, there's so many, but there's one that really, that really sticks out to me. And I talk about it in my book, which is at my last job, I was a recruiter. So I worked for, and a recruiting agency, we were the middleman between job candidates and the Fortune 500 companies that were trying to hire them. 
And there was one day where I did like 10 job interviews and everybody had been laid off. This one had been fired. There'd been a merger. So anybody making above got laid off. And I just had this moment where I was, and at the same time, um, because I'd been blogging and I'd been on the internet and I'd been trying to learn things, all my internet friends were all quitting their jobs to do like the blogging thing full time. And I was like, oh, there's something here. I think the economy is changing. You know, so that was a big aha because I noticed there was a shift happening, right? So that was a big aha moment. And then that same day, I had another big aha moment, which was a real job ain't that secure. I was better off trying to go learn how to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. So besides uh, what you're doing currently, is there something else that maybe you would you entertain doing down the road? Uh, well, another thing that I do, which I really love, is um, I do brand ambassador work with companies. So we've worked with Intuit, Capital One, which I've been a Capital One customer for years. So that was like a dream client. Um, you know, Relay Rewards, Florida Prepaid College. Florida Prepaid College is really fulfilling because it's our college savings program in the state of Florida. So people can avoid taking student loans. Um mm-hmm. So I've done really fulfilling work in that sense, in that way. Um, And then one of the things that I really want to do, which my team and I will be working on this year, is a live event um, for our clients. And then also I want to create a mastermind specifically about money mindset, the emotions behind money, and really how to start unraveling sort of that, that onion and peeling back those layers. Because... Part of the reason people sabotage themselves so much, going back to those entrepreneurs who just don't make it, a lot of the times we are sabotaging ourselves because of our thoughts and feelings about money that we may have Mm -hmm. picked up from a young age, we may have picked it up from the news, you know, and sometimes it's not even about money, sometimes it's thoughts and feelings about ourselves that then affect what we do with money. So I would love to create a program that is specifically just um, a real deep dive into that. That sounds very interesting. So that's in the works now. <laughs> Got to keep my eyes out for that one. Yeah. So what would you say your greatest character strength is? I am resilient. I am resilient and I make decisions very fast. I make stuff happen. If I want it, I go get it. Mm-hmm. On the flip side of that, uh, your greatest weakness um, I'm not very detail oriented. Um, that's why I hire people who are, <laughs> uh, not my strong suit. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah. And the wisdom is yeah, actually hiring the people that, that can fill the, fill the gaps. Yeah. Uh, do you have a place you go to, uh, for, for getting your ideas, uh, idea gathering, brainstorming, whatnot? I just go straight to the source, which is my audience. That's it. I have conversations with them all the time on DMs, on complimentary calls. I mean, we get such a wealth of information just from that, that we're then like, okay, this is going on. What can we create to solve this problem that we keep seeing over and over and over again? Mm -hmm. So if you're to describe uh, your day at a very high level, uh, Mm -hmm. how would you describe it? What do you mean by a high level? Give me a little context there. Uh, what, what your day looks like? Oh, that depends on the day. So today's Monday. So today is marketing and media day. And then tomorrow is Tuesday. So tomorrow is sales. I'm a really big believer in batching. I am not one who can move from like one thing to another and then you just get stressed. So I'm like, if I'm doing podcast interviews today, then I'm doing content today and I'm doing media today and that's it. I'll move on to sales tomorrow. Okay. That's a, a very interesting concept of how to structure your, structure your calendar. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do like that. <clears throat> so if you're to, to uh, tell us something um, about yourself that no, nobody really knows about, um, kind of a trivia thing. Hmm. I don't know how to ride a bike. Really? No idea. Never learned. Do you want to? Uh, not really. I mean, <laughs> it's not like 
necessary to my life, though lots of people offer all the time <laughs> to teach me. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amanda, uh, that's kind of uh, winding out our, our time uh, this afternoon. But before we before we part, I do want to have it have an opportunity for you to give out uh, different contact information so mm -hmm. that people can reach out to you and take advantage of your your gifts, your talents, uh, your offerings. Uh, how do they do that? Yeah. So if you want to reach out to us directly, you could either go to Twitter or Instagram, which is at Amanda Abeya, and Abeya is spelled A B as in boy. E L L A. Uh, you could also send an email to support at amandaabeya.com and we can get you squared away um, with any content that you may be looking for. If you have any questions, um, our team is constantly trying to help. Like, we got so many DMs and emails coming in all the time. People are like, Do you have, like, I have a question about this? And we're like, Well, we already did a podcast episode on that. Here it is. Um, so we can definitely help you that way. Um, we also offer free complimentary calls with me and my associate coach Megan. So if you're in the beginning stages of a business, if you want to increase your revenue, if you want to get better at sales, just go to amandaabeya.com forward slash free call and we can get you squared away. And of course you can find everything on my website. I'm perfect about it. Well, I thank you for being on the program today and you know, sharing some of the insights that you have and some of your viewpoints and, just letting us uh, have an opportunity to dig, dig a little deeper and get to know oh, you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, thank you very much. And uh, as I enjoy telling all of my guests, I will see you around the bend, my friend. Yes. You've been listening to Legacy Cast. Thank you for joining us today. And be sure to come back next time as we speak with more top influencers, industry experts, and business owners from around the world.